what is the difference between Arctodus, short-faced bear, and Arctotherium? Prehistoric times were teeming with an unknowable number of fearsome beasts, creatures that would send modern lions, tigers, and even bears running for the hills. And speaking of bears, we've got two iconic titans of the wild before time. In one corner, Arctodus, the short-faced bear, a North American nightmare that haunted woodlands and plains. In the other corner, Central and South America's apex killer and the largest bear of all time, Arctotherium. What is the story with these two monsters? What were the differences between them, and how did they stack up against modern bears? Let's look into it. Arctodus Arctodus is actually a genus name for at least two confirmed species. The first is the North American Lesser Short-Faced Bear, aka Arctodus pristinus, and the other is the legendary North American Giant Short-Faced Bear, or Arctodus simus. Both species lived during the Pleistocene, with the Lesser Bear dating back to the early part of the period, and the Giant species living in the late part. The larger bear is a direct descendant of the lesser, too, and they probably lived together and intermingled during the middle Pleistocene. Now, Arctodus is part of the wider bear family, Ursidae. However, it is also in the Trimarctini subfamily, along with several other extinct genera and the living South American speckled bear, Trimarctus ornatus. This means Arctodus bears were more closely related to the spectacled bear than any other living bear species. The lesser Arctodus was restricted to the eastern parts of the modern-day United States before its disappearance 300,000 years ago. The giant one had a far larger domain, thriving in the central and western U.S., northern Mexico and western Canada, and Alaska before its and other megafauna's demise around 13,000 years ago. So what does lesser, or more interestingly giant, mean, numbers-wise? Well, quite a bit, actually. The lesser bear was very similar in size to modern-day grizzlies. With a size range of 310 to 880 pounds, they stood at about 3.5 feet at the shoulder on average and were between 6.5 and 7.8 feet long. On hind legs, they were at least 6.5 feet tall. The giant short-faced bear is the subject of much speculation, but luckily the relative abundance of fossils allows for more educated estimates. The fossils show larger skulls, longer and more robust bones, and bigger teeth than most, if not all, modern species. Shoulder height was between 3.3 and 5.5 feet, meaning the big ones could look a grown man in the face. Standing on the hind legs was from 8 to 11 feet. Its extra-long limbs could add a further 3 to 4 feet of vertical enormity. Weight was about 1,370 pounds on average which is similar to big male polar and Kodiak bears during their peak bulking periods. However, the largest giant bears were north of 2,000 pounds. Sex was a major influence on size, as males of either species were much larger than females. Male lesser short-faced bears often overlapped in size with female giant short-faced bears, which is a common cause of confusion and mistaken identity for paleontologists. Like most Tremarctony bears, the two Arctodus species had what looked to be short faces, compared to modern black, brown, or ice bears, whose snouts are fairly elongated. However, this apparent lack of snout is an illusion caused by the bear's relatively deep skulls. One leading theory is that Tamarctine bears develop such boxy heads to support advanced nasal anatomy for superior sense of smell. If so, what kind of adventures did these massive bears sniff their way into during a near 2.5 million year stint on Earth? Well, probably foraging for food like bears usually do. A bunch of evidence, including teeth and even poop, indicate that much of their diet was, in fact, plant-based. Despite massive canine teeth, dental wear and tear found on many fossils support the generally accepted omnivore theory. Incisor wear and carbohydrate-caused cavities are the major signs that these beasts usually partook in grasses, leaves, berries, roots, and shoots like most bears in North America. That said, carnivorism was always an option too, especially when convenience allowed. Opportunistic predation is still a hallmark trait in many bears, including the spectacled bear. And given the size of Arctodus bears, 
they probably had a wide range of opportunities in prehistoric North America. Herbivores like deer, pigs, and sheep were likely common victims. Then there were also horses, mastodons, and mammoths that had vulnerable young that the bears loved to pick off. Outside of hunting for themselves, Arctodus bears were most certainly scavengers. With keen noses, they could pick up the scent of dead or dying creatures from miles away and track them down. Of course, many other meat lovers were running around at the time, and this competition may have been a key reason behind the bear's eventual demise. However, in one-on-one -on -one encounters, few animals would have been bold enough to challenge, let alone intimidate, Arctodus. So the bears may have profited greatly off the hard work of rivals like wolves, cougars, American lions, saber-toothed cats, and other bears by bullying them away from their kills. Like all bears, Arctodus species were most likely solitary most of their adult lives, only coming together to breed and maybe share sizable foraging grounds. Of course, mothers and cubs would spend the longest stretches of time together, as bears often stay with their mothers for at least two years. Adult males were more territorial, and therefore intolerant of other males or cubs sired by other males. Arctodus bears also lived alongside the early North American humans, and conflict was a certainty. Remains of bears and artifacts from cultures like the Clovis people show that humans hunted the giant short-faced bears, lived off their meat, and used their skins and bones to fashion blankets, tools, and ornaments. Humans may have been another major contributor to the bear's extinction. Not only were human hunters a threat to these slow reproducers, but they were a direct competitor for both meat and plant-based foods too. Also, following the onset of climate change, which negatively impacted plant nutrition and availability of large prey, smaller black and brown bears were far better suited to survive the end of the Pleistocene. Arctotherium Arctotherium was also a genus of bears from the Tremarctony subfamily. Unlike Arctodus, Arctotherium bears lived in Central and South America. There were at least five species that lived during the genus run from 2.5 million to 10,000 years ago. The oldest of them all, Arctotherium angustidens, is also comfortably the largest species of bear ever discovered. The other four species, Monariense, Winge, Ventustum, and Tarangensi, were smaller and more in line with brown, black, and speckled bears. Like all Tremarctines, the Arctotherium bears trace their genealogy to a common ancestor known as Pleonarctus. Pleonarctus lived in North America between 10 and 3 million years ago. Arctotherium's oldest fossil is a tooth that dates back 2.5 million years from El Salvador. The oldest remains discovered in South America are of Angostidans, dating back a million years. The history of this particular line of bears before they settled in South America is murky at best. Angostidans, now better known as the giant South American short-faced bear, was a behemoth that stood anywhere between 11 and 14 feet on its hind legs and nearly 6 feet at the shoulder when on all fours. Weight was between 2,100 and 3,800 pounds, but some more adventurous estimates say they could reach the bear's share of 5,000 pounds. The bones also suggest that this bear was thicker and more robust than the more lanky Arctodus bears of the north. The largest bear on record, and possibly the largest carnivorous mammal to ever walk the earth. The polar bear, today's mammalian killer-in-chief, is about half to two-thirds of the size of the prehistoric giant. Arctotherium angostidens went extinct around 700,000 years ago and was replaced by smaller Arctotherium species. Wingé, the smallest, was also the most widespread across South America. It was between 100 and 300 pounds. Vetustum was between 220 and 660 pounds, while Tarragensi ranged from 300 to 900 pounds. The second largest Arctotherium species was Bonariensi, which had an estimated weight range of 370 and 1,100 pounds. These numbers mean that the largest males of Bonariensi and Tarragensi were fairly close to the giant Angostidens females. They lived in the jungles, swamps, grasslands, and scattered woodlands of the South American wilds, looking for opportunities to feed their insatiable appetites. Dental evidence shows that Arctotherium was more of an active meat-eater and predator than Arctodus. Damage to canine teeth, including harsh wear, chipping, and breaking, is far more common in this group of bears. 
despite them having been around at pretty much the same time as Arctodus. Large herbivorous animals were the primary preference, and in South America, this menu would have featured tapirs, elephant-like gomphotheres, ground sloths, and primates. Using their immense limbs and powerful jaws, the large Arctotherium species would wrestle, claw, and maim prey to death. Smaller Arctotherium species may also have lived on insects, birds, eggs, reptiles, and frogs. Given the abundance of aquatic environments in South America, it's safe to say that fish, turtles, crabs, and perhaps even dolphins were part of the bear's diets. With their blocky skulls, Arctotherium bears would have had tremendous bite force to breach most prey defenses and crush bones, shells, and tough scales. Large species like Augustidens and Bonariensi were apex predators, along with animals like the giant jaguars and the infamous Smilodon populator saber tooth. The big bears could hunt larger prey, which was a massive advantage at the height of the mega herbivore era. Smaller species like Wingay were highly predatory as well but had to watch their backs for cats, wolves, and cannibalistic bears. The smaller Arctotherium species also show evidence of a greater proportion of fruits and leaves in their diet, shown through less violent wear and tear than in Angustidens or Bonariensi. The Arctotherium bears died out around 10,000 years ago, though some debated fossils may be more recent. Arctotherium wingay was likely the last of the genus as climate change tipped the scales against the meat-dependent bears in favor of the more versatile spectacled bear we have today.